Yeah, is there any reason why we wouldn't? So notice the pKa isn't going to change. The pKa is just a property of acetic acid. The pKa is a property of acetic acid. It doesn't change just because we've changed the concentrations. So we don't have to like recalculate this pKa. This is the same pKa that acetic acid would always have. So let's work out what answer we get. You got it. I got 4.47. Oh, yeah, 4.475. You still got something a little bit different. What is that? Oh, you, you redid the uh, PKA to be more exact. Okay, well, we don't have to be that careful about this anyway. So we can just say that this is going to be approximately 4.7. Your, your answer is probably better than mine. So, four, what did you get? 4.4. Okay. And as you saw, it's important to be careful about putting the right number on the top and the bottom here. We put the base number on the top and the acid number on the bottom. By the way, let me mention a pet peeve of mine. What do these brackets mean? Concentrate. The concentration of. So it makes sense to put them around the word base, because we're putting in the concentration of base. But it doesn't make any sense to put them here, because we're not doing the concentration of 0.07. So everybody does that, but it doesn't make any sense. And in a complicated problem, it can actually lead to mistakes and confusions. You put the name of the substance inside brackets, but you don't actually put its concentration inside the brackets. After all, what we would write here is we would say the concentration of the acetate is 0.07 molar. We wouldn't say that the concentration of the acetate is the concentration of 0.07 molar. That just doesn't quite make sense. So if we needed to put something around this, we would put parentheses, not brackets. Now, what did the pH start at? It started at 4.74. And notice that it's barely budged. We're still in the 4 region, even though we added the 0.03 molar hydrochloric acid. What would have happened if you added 0.03 molar hydrochloric acid to water? Well, that would have directly generated three times ten to the negative two hydronium, and the pH would be between one and two. If we simply added hydro, um, hydrochloric to water, we'd have a pH that's below two. But because we have a buffer, we haven't even gotten out of the fours. So this shows that the buffer really works, and you can see how the hydrochloric isn't producing much hydronium because it's mainly getting neutralized by the base. Sorry. Um. Does it matter how much of HCl we put in? Because right now we're just focusing on the concentration, but we didn't specify how much of it we put in. So does it matter? You mean the number of moles? Yeah. That's right. Well, what matters is the concentration. Uh, because, yeah, what, what matters here is the concentration. So Although, to tell the truth, um, you, you can actually use the henderson hasselbalch equation either in terms of concentrations or in terms of moles. Um, because uh, what, what, is the con what, what is the concentration is just the number of moles divided by the volume. But both of these have the same volume. So it doesn't matter whether you divide both of these by the volume or not. So as long as you're consistent, you can plug in the number of moles of base and acid, or you can plug in the concentration of the base and acid. <coughs> but then if we add more HCl of 0.03, Concentration, wouldn't it change the pH differently? Say we put one liter versus 0.5 liters of 0.03 more. Ah, yeah. So I guess what I should have been more clear about here is I should have said that we were adding enough hydrochloric acid to create a concentration of 0.03 molar okay. in the new solution. So that's that's a good point that I should have been more clear about. We're adding this, we're adding HCl to form 0.03 molar concentration in the new solution. So you're absolutely right. If I, um, it, so this was kind of um, a simpler type of question. You write that on uh, another question, you might be given what the concentration of the HCl is in the old solution, or you might be given the number of moles. And then you have to figure out the concentration in the new solution. In fact, we'll probably work up to a problem like that in a second. So that's right. This, this table only works if you're only using concentrations in the new solution. Otherwise, these things are not comparable to each other. 
So what we're saying is that we're adding enough HCl to form a 0.03 molar concentration in the new solution. Uh, in a second, we'll probably look at some problems where you, you have, where you, you have to start with the number of moles in the old solution. So we can get to that. But can you shortly. only use molarity when you're using the ice box, or can you do like moles or grams? Like, can you use different units? This works. Uh, this works for amounts or concentrations, which means that it works for moles or molarity. So not grams. Okay. But not for grams. That's right. And you can see uh, why that is. If this concentration decreases by one molar, this concentration also has to decrease by one molar. Or if you use up one mole of this, you have to use up one mole of this. But if you use up one gram of this, you don't have to use up one gram of this because they have different molecular weights. So yeah, um, you cannot do this in terms of masses. It has to be in terms of either molarity or moles. And for the purposes of henderson hasselbalch equation, it doesn't really matter that much which one you use because either of those could get plugged in here. Um, as we work through some more problems, it'll probably be clearer how that works. All right, so we've seen how to figure out the new pH um, after you add some acid to a buffer solution. Now, one thing that should, uh, you should notice here is this only worked because um, we added less acid than the amount of acid and base that we started with. So that even after the acid has neutralized some of the base, we still had a lot of acid and base left. However, you can, so you should think of the buffer as like a sponge. In rough terms, what this buffer is doing is sponging up any extra acid or base that we added. We've added some hydrochloric acid that could potentially change the pH, but that's getting sponged up by the acetate. And if we add any base, that'll get sponged up by the acetic acid. However, there's a limit to how much any sponge can sponge up. Eventually, it gets used up, and then the, the pH will start changing. That would tell you about the buffer capacity. Well, the buffer capacity here is, roughly speaking, um, certainly the maximum buffering capacity here is this can't uh, absorb more than 0.1 molar concentration. So if we added more than 0.1 molar concentration of hydrochloric, that would exceed the buffering capacity of the system. So exceeding the buffer would always just be um, using up all of the conjugate, the weak conjugate? It would be using up all of one of the two parts of the buffer. Okay. So if we add 0.1 molar of hydrochloric, that would completely use up all of our acid here and would exceed the buffering capacity. But if you added 0.1 molar of sodium hydroxide, that would totally use up the acetate and that would also exceed the buffering capacity. So the buffering capacity is roughly, um, roughly given by the amounts of acid and base that you have. Um, so how about this new solution? What's the buffering capacity of the new solution? What's the maximum amount of additional acid that we could sponge up now? And what's the additional, uh, maximum additional amount of base that we could sponge up? Yeah, so now the buffering capacities are a little bit different for sponging up acids and bases because now we have two different concentrations. Now, truth to be told, the buffer wouldn't work very well once we started getting a very low amounts of acid or base. Um, but roughly speaking, we can say the maximum buffering capacity is just given by the amount of weak acid and weak base that we have. So yeah, why don't we try that question seven that you were showing me. But anyway, um, again, this shows us, um, don't forget to use the henderson hasselbalch equation. Anytime you're ending up with both the weak acid and the weak base, you can use this as a shortcut. Um, in class, um, you define the buffer capacity as the ratio between the base and the, um, they define the buffer capacity um, to be the ratio has to be between one tenth and ten. Okay, fair enough. Was that the same as what we just explained? Was well, what I was saying was I was saying that the maximum that it could ever be, um, I was just saying that the, obviously the buffer won't work once one of the concentrations goes to zero. Okay. Um, but I briefly mentioned the buffer is not going to work very well even when it's close to zero. And now they've told you what your instructor considers close to zero. Okay. So. So if you use up almost all of the base, obviously the buffer won't work very well. Well, if this goes close to zero, this fraction will be close to zero. Well, they're saying that once this is uh, close to one-tenth, the buffer is not working very well. Uh, uh, what, about the, what about if you use up almost all of the acid? Well, as the, amount of, uh, as the amount of acid goes down, this fraction gets bigger and bigger, right? Um, technically, when the concentration of acid was zero, this would go to infinity. 
Um, but the buffer starts to break down even before you get to zero acid. And what they told you is to use 10 as the upper limit. 